Hey guys, Philip from Hunter Resource. Thanks for stopping by for another video. So in yesterday's video, we did the Phantom Grip LSD in the rear end, the rear diff of our Honda CRV, dubbed the Honda CR Yeater. <laughs> but anyway, we did the Phantom Grip yesterday and on today's episode, we're gonna be working on doing the pinning of the clutches in the rear end, getting it ready to install the Freelander drive shaft. Let's get to it. Okay, so some of you may or may not know, but I had a 900 horsepower all-wheel drive EG hatch. In that car, I use a CRV rear diff with it just pinned. I had an open diff in the rear. I did try a welded diff for a little while, but you know I was trying to do something different with this one. And that's why I went with the Phantom Grip. You know, I've heard mixed reviews about them saying they don't work. I've heard some people say they do work. We're gonna find out. Uh, I was considering doing locking plates on this rear end or for the clutch pack rather than pinning it, but uh, the contact I had for the clutch pack or the clutch locking plates didn't come through and um, you know, it's nothing against them or anything, but um, I went to Lowe's today and picked up some quarter inch rod and this one's a little rusty but i didn't really care because of what i'm doing with it and i got some of these dewalt cobalt industrial drill bits quarter inch got two of those uh because these clutch packs are rough on drill bits and you want to make sure you have a good quality drill bit so i am going to be pinning this one too and um right now i guess i'm about to pull this front half off of this uh, diff and see if I can get her welded up. All right, so I don't know if any of y'all have seen the videos on pinning the clutches and stuff. I do have a video on that, which I'll put up here. But uh, for the most part, all you gotta do is take off these eight millimeter bolts all the way around. And then once we get that apart also, we'll have to take off this nut. Here's a 34 millimeter. So I've just got a 34 millimeter socket. Kind of like an axle nut, but uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so I got three holes drilled in that and I just based them off of uh, these that, I just took this in there just to keep some metal from falling down in here while I was drilling. But um, I based them off of uh, these holes. So I just went straight out from those. Used a center punch, made my spots and uh, drilled them. I'm just gonna use three on this. I think three is more than sufficient. Uh, I've just gotta take my little grinder and knock off these little tabs for the drill bit came through, just clean it up a little bit, knock the metal down, and then I'm gonna clean up the metal here as well, and all the way around just so I could make a good weld. I just put a couple tacks on there before I started drilling just to keep it all together, and yeah, just basically keep it all together. So that's that. I'll uh, grind it down like I was talking about, and then clean it up with some brake cleaner, and then uh, should be good to start welding some pins in this. Okay, so this thing's still kind of warm, but I got that thing welded like trash too because the surface just got oil in it and whatnot. Clean it up best I could, but I got those three pins welded on that side and the three pins welded on this side. It's not the most beautiful job. Uh, then on my all-wheel drive Civic, I took the pump out. Okay, and you can take all this pump out. You can unbolt it and all that stuff. It's not going to hurt to take all this out. On this one, I'm going to leave it in. It's not going to do any good. 
but we're gonna leave it in. So let's uh, go line those two little tabs up with the little slots on the pump to where it seats all the way down like that. You can see that bearing sits down onto the clutch pack. If you put locking plates in this, you have to leave the pump in because the pump retains pressure on this because you don't do any welding with the uh, locking plates. This method, you can take th this pump out, but like I said, it's not, not necessary to take it out. So I'm gonna stand it up, take all this old RTV off of this, get it cleaned up to where I can um, put some fresh silicone on there. Same for the outer case here, get it cleaned up real good and then uh, slap it back together. Alright, so now we have the differential back together and it's kind of dark out. So we're going to um, wait, I guess, a couple days and, and we'll get this installed. But it'll be a couple days for me, but a couple seconds for you guys. So anyways, I've got that rear diff installed in here now. Um, obviously don't really you know it looks the same in there now right now i've just got the straight drive shaft now i don't recommend driving it with a straight drive shaft if you have the clutches pinned i say it's bad for the transmission but i don't plan on really doing a whole lot of driving especially off road or on road driving uh, prior to um putting the freelander drive shaft in it and stuff so that should be coming up here pretty quick so we've been thinning the herd out here this not near as many Hondas here as it was. Been doing a good job, haven't we? I guess. <laughs> All right, so I was just sitting here editing this video and I realized that I really give a lot of information about why I'm pinning these clutches. So with the CRV diff uh, on the rear, it has a clutch pack in it, the clutch pack that we put the pins in. And that clutch pack basically only sends power to the rear of the CRV once the front slips. It, it, it engages that clutch pack once the front slips. Um, so by pinning the clutches, it makes it more of a full-time all-wheel drive. It has a potential to break stuff if you don't run a viscous coupler. So if you do pin the clutches or you put locking plates in the rear clutch pack, I do recommend using a, a viscous coupler. In this case, I'm gonna be using uh, Land Rover Freelander drive shaft. So again, it's the same setup that I had in my 900 horsepower all-wheel drive car. The only difference really with this one is I'm not making near as much power and I'm using a different brand of drive shaft adapters. All that information will be uploaded as I, you know, continue to install these pieces. I am going to be case swapping my CRV here in the near future. I've got 99% of the stuff to do it right now. It's just a matter of finding the time to dedicate to my own project and not having to work on everybody else's stuff because, you know, I basically have the shop full time as well as a mobile mechanic service full time. And there's just not enough hours in the day. So hopefully here soon, I will find the time to dedicate to my own stuff because that's really what's fun. Not working on everybody else's stuff. It's fun working on my own stuff and having fun stuff. <laughs> so uh, if you need more information, uh, more detailed information on pinning the clutches for the CRV diff, check the description. Uh, I'll put a couple videos down there for pinning and also one for where I did a locking plates for the clutch pack. It does the same, you know, you achieve the same results, uh, just a different method of locking that mechanism. So I hope you found some useful information in today's video. If you did, make sure you smash the like button for me. It really helps me out. It gives me up in the algorithm and gets more people exposed to my content, which is in turn is going to give me more motivation to continue making videos that helps you guys. Uh, you know, I have tons of DIY 
uh, repairs on CRVs on my page. So make sure you check those out. And as always, I appreciate those comments and the subscribes. I try to reply to all the comments. So, you know, if I don't get to your comments, I'm sorry. But I promise I do try to, to read every single one of them and, and reply. So please drop a comment below and let me know what you think about this process. Hope to see you in another video soon. Make sure, again, like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. Thanks, guys. Peace. Thank you.